Welcome to Tavern Archery. I'm Johannes von Hammersbach, and after a day on the archery field, we come into the tavern, grab a pint, sit down, and talk about all things target archery. Prost. We're back in the tavern today with Master Godric of Hampton from the Barony of Enderwald from the Kingdom of the East. And Master Godric is going to show us today how to make arrows, from arrow blanks to getting arrows on target. So we're back and we're going to be testing draw length. So this is the last step before we tip the arrows, we're going to figure out draw length. I happen to have a draw length uh, arrow that has 20 inches all the way out to 36 inches. And so I have my son here, uh, Donald, who's going to help me um, show how we do draw length. So, put that on the string. Um, and what I'm going to ask him to do is to um, draw the bow back to his normal anchor point. And we're going to do this three times. And so that we can get kind of an average. So go ahead and draw it to your normal draw length. Uh, and it looks to be about 29 inches. Now I'm measuring just in front of the, the rest uh, because the reason you want to do that is we don't want um, you to overdraw and have the tip hit the back of the bow. So the first draw was up to 29 inches. So let's do it again. And that one's about 28. So release it, relax. And one last time, let's see what we get. And again, it's about 28 and a half. So somewhere between 28 and 29. So we'll, we will be cutting his arrows about 29 inches. Now don't forget that the point, the field point on the end will add another inch to it. So if we made his arrows 28 inches, the length of the arrow would then be 29. So now we have the draw length. We can go in and, and start cutting the arrows and then getting them ready for tipping. All right, we're back. And now we're done to the final step. We've got our draw length and now we're going to cut the shaft to, to length, taper it, and then put the point, or put the field point on it. Um, I have this arrow here that uh, we made. It's for loader gear and I need to cut it to length. So I'm going to cut it to the length of uh, my son that we did the draw length with. He had between 28 and 29 inches. So we're going to set my jig here uh, to 28 and a half. Um, I'm going to bring this camera over to show you it. This is a, again, this is a power cutoff saw. And as you can see, I can set the distance um, with this back and forth. Um, I have a little cutoff blade in here, <clears throat> and when I set the arrow in, uh, I can just turn it, and it will just cut the um, to cut the shaft off at that length. So let me set my camera back up here, hopefully, so everybody can see me. All right, and so again, this thing makes a lot of noise, so we'll probably mute the the video when we're doing this, but. I'm going to set this to 28 and a half. Make sure I lock it down. And then I'm just going to set the knock into this groove and then cut my shaft. There, I have my shaft cut to 28 inches. Um, now we're gonna go back to my power woodchuck. And before we go to that, um, those of you out there who are making your own arrows and you're only making a dozen or two, um, you really don't need to have one of these. Um, I started off with a tape measure and a, and a hacksaw blade. Um, that works perfectly well. Um, um, so you don't have to go out and get this. I have a business, so that, that's why. And I make many hundreds of arrows uh, a season. Um, and so um, having one of these makes it more efficient. 
don't need one, if you can afford one and like to have it, you can. Uh, it works really well. So now we're going to go back over to the woodchuck. Let me bring my camera over here with me. Again, here's my woodchuck. Uh, I'm going to, now I'm going to use this other groove, this one right here. This is going to put my, uh, you probably don't see that very well. Um, this is going to put my point taper onto it. So here we go. Again, this is going to make up quite a bit of noise. So. So there is our taper. Um, here's my field point. I want to press my field point on there to make sure it's going to fit, and it does. Um, the next step is to glue the point onto the shaft. And the point, I use a two-part epoxy, okay? I've used um, hot melt glue in the past, um, but um, and I might be going back to hot melt glue uh, because of uh, uh, some different things that go along with two-part epoxy. But two-part epoxy, this is the JB Well brand. Um, and I can mix up a little bit. The two-part epoxy is made up of resin and a hardener. So there's a little bit of that. And there's a little bit of this. This is the resin, this is the hardener. Don't have much left in the bottle, so I gotta get it to come down. There we go. The key to using two-part epoxy is to make sure that you have uh, mixed it thoroughly. And so I want to make sure that I mix this together thoroughly. I want to take me about 20 seconds or so, mix it all up. Because if you don't get all the resin and the hardener together, um, you're, you won't have a good bond. Originally, the reason that I went and you from hot melt glue is because different target faces um, will create, generate heat. So if you're trying to shoot through styrofoam, that creates a lot of heat when that arrow or bolt passes through that. And hot melt glue tends after time to, as you heat it up and then quickly cool it down, heat it up and quickly cool it down, um, you break the bond of the glue and you end up losing a lot of tips that way. Um, I found that with a two-part epoxy, um, I don't have the heat issue. Um, it's able to withstand more of the heat of the different types of targets. Um, do I still lose tips from time to time? Yeah, I do. If I hit wood or if I hit something solid, um, that jarring will break the bond as well. Um, but for the most part, the two-part epoxy um, seems to work really well. And so I'm just going to turn my shaft in the epoxy and now I'm going to take my point and I'm going to press it on. I'm going to turn it and press it as hard as I can get it. And then I'm going to take and clean off the excess glue. And then I'm going to do a spin test. I want to make sure that the point is on there um, square. So when I spin it, uh, when I spin it, I don't get any wobble. That means that this point is on there square. So that is how we make, or that's the process for making arrows. Again, I want to stress that um, the products and the equipment that I use are not the bend all beat all. They're not the, um, they work for me. Um, you need to find equipment that's within your price range and you need to find products that you like to use. Um, so I want to stress that I, 
wanted, I enjoyed making this, showing you the process. Um, if you have any questions, you can always contact me at NorthTowerArchery at gmail.com. So thank you for viewing my, uh, my process, and I hope you enjoy it. Thank you, Master Goderick, for showing us the fundamentals of arrow making. We look forward to seeing you again in the tavern. Frost. They long had chopped so well, and no wonder for truly, they spend time gathered here, they spend time gathered here in tavern archery.